Hi folks, it's Carol Ann from SassyTownHouseLiving.com and I wanted to just say quickly before you watch this interview with George H. Lewis, which I'm absolutely honored to be able to speak with him, I wanted to just say thank you so much for taking the time to listen and that today it's pretty apparent we live in an age where the elite aim to marginalize dissenting views and usher in their own orthodoxy. We need to come to terms with our own inner truth through community and shared beliefs. At this time, it almost seems like we all learned how to die and be reborn again in a single lifetime. And I believe that we all awaken in our own predestined time frames, whether it's through great suffering or great joy. But it's imperative that your voice is not silenced and that you can share your truth openly and with conviction. So again, I'm honored to be able to speak with George. You'll discover all about his works, his spirit, and his convictions. And I pray that we can all unite and unfold our true destinies to foster peace, love, and unity globally. Thank you so much again for watching. Hi, everyone. I'm so super excited today because I have a great honor of bringing to you through an interview, George H. Lewis, and he is an artist, an author, a light worker, astrologer, a sound and vibrational healer, and an international speaker. He has a passion for raising awareness uh, through the collective, to the collective, and promoting healing and awakening through all of the mediums of arts, astrology, and sound. George inspires people to step into their higher version of themselves. He believes, and so do I and millions of others, that a cosmic awakening is upon us. And the faster we realize this and embrace it, the more liberating it will be for us individually and collectively. Now, obviously, that's just a short summary of your work, George. Can you just quickly let everybody know um, some more details about what it is that you do, especially your artwork, which I absolutely yeah. adore? Well, thank you so much, Carol, Carol Ann, for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today and obviously to, you know, to share some insights with your listeners. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all in this together. You know, this is uh, what is a great awakening. It's actually us coming to terms with our own precious individual sovereignty, but also knowing that we have to do this collectively. We can't just have a few people on this planet go into 5D or Christ consciousness, whatever the conversation is, whatever the terminology we use. I'm not going to debate over that it's it's a question of us doing it together and this is a planetary ascension we're in and of course for the ones who are in that process if you like the hero's journey you know before this you wanted to discuss a little bit about using the myth the metaphor of the hero's journey some of us have stepped onto the threshold you see already to begin the awakening process no one's better than the other it's just a question of who's on the threshold stepped over it down then into the abyss through the death and resurrection and then out the other side some people haven't stepped over that yet and our, and our job in a way is 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 to try and help people because when we do this it's going to be remarkable the other side we are going to have quite literally heaven on earth i mean i can speak today to some of the technologies that might be coming in um but it, it's really about our consciousness and we have to do it together absolutely agree um can you talk a little bit about what you offer to the public in terms of your healing and astrology services, because I know a lot of folks are going to be interested in that. No, I mean, I've been an astrologer for definitely over a, a Saturn square now. Actually, it's probably about eight, nine, ten years. Um, uh, astrology is a wonderful language. It came to me very quickly. Uh, this rather strange, eccentric man who very sadly passed away earlier this year was my first mentor, Mont Monty Taylor. He was a Jungian astrologer. And he came into my life, walked into my art studio in Chelsea, New York, eight, nine years ago, and said, I'm going to teach you astrology. And I, I thought, oh, okay. I was pretty skeptical. Never cynical was a big difference, but I was quite skeptical in that British way, you know, clearly pretty programmed. I said, okay, prove me, because I thought, I'm not really sure, you know, all that mumbo jumbo. And, but I was always interested because I've always been very, very spiritual. And very, very quickly, Caroline, I realized, wow, there is power in this. And of course, I started to learn that, you know, that the Vatican Church systematically abolished and banned astrology from about the 8th, 9th century common era until the early modern period of the, of the, of the if you like, the, the Enlightenment period of European 1700s. And when you begin to realize this, you see, you begin to pick up patterns 
that we human beings have really been kept in the dark. And so for me, you know, astrology is an amazing lens through which I can help people uncover their soul contract because it's helped me so I can share that amazing insight with other people. So I do private readings, absolutely, and I do workshops uh, for groups. And then I work with sound. I mean, I, uh, that's been a big part of my, my, my journey. Um, I've always been a musician. I actually believe that we're all musicians of different types. Um, and frequency is, is it. So when you apply the right frequency, whether it's through playing the piano, I was a chorister at school, singing, or even just listening to the right frequency, something alchemical happens inside the body because the spirit meets the physical. And, you know, astrology of this ties in, the elementals, meaning alchemy is actually about integrating the four senses. So if I explain it in this way, simply earth, the lowest, which is physical. So Western medicine kind of only treats the physical. Mm -hmm. And then you have birth, which is the emotional feelings. On top of that, you have the air, which is which is mental. And on top of that, you have the plasma fire, which is um, you know spiritual. When you integrate all four, you have an amazing opportunity to create alchemy. And that's what the fifth element, the fifth density, all those things are. So it's a very, very exciting time to be able to share the astrology and the um, sound therapy together. And, and that's what I do, you know, try and share the magic that is for all of us. You know, these are these these, these are disciplines which we all can have access to. Now, how do you do healing remotely with a person that can't be there? Because I saw many of your videos where you use those bowls and sound. So how would you implement that for like a, you know, a video session? I mean, and I'm always going to say there's nothing better than in the, in the flesh, of course. But it is incredible. Look at you and I now the connection that we're creating, we haven't met each other, and there is already a heart-centered connection that we've created very quickly, yes. because the frequency is matching. So when we are dealing with, uh, you know, when I'm working with patients or online, uh, we, we establish a connection, and I will often use music, sound, chants, and uh, voice activations. I, I will really intuit, I will use my intuition to, to see how I can help best serve. Um, and of course, I'm so blessed because every single patient or client I have uh, almost becomes a friend and I learn something as much as they do. Wonderful. I saw some of your testimonials too on your website. Uh, of course, I'll have your website and your Instagram running across the screen for folks. Uh, let me ask you a question, something that um, I guess over the, especially the past three years it is really um, in my heart in a very deep way. What do you think is going to happen to human creativity and the dumbing down of the of like the human race globally, uh, especially with AI replacing so much of our creativity and what we're able to do? What can we do to foster that? Well, I, I have a slightly different ver belief in what's actually happening. So the globalist agenda and the, the mainstream media is going to paint a very specific picture of the great reset in terms of globalization artificial intelligence coming in to help humanity to right. make it easy i have a very different impression my impression is is devolution is localization my impression is actually the rise of humanity but we need the great reset to create the greater weak awakening what that means is we actually need because of the well, this is the way the 3d works human beings got lazy and also we were in the dark we were all in the dark we are being activated now so the light workers around the world and all your listeners will be part of that is we are activating ourselves our auric field expands our neurological pathways are activated that's what the kundalini is that's what the chakra system is it doesn't matter what we call it the greeks call it one thing the hindus hindus call it another it's the sense of the divine matrix within ourselves which is activated so i i tend to see this battle which is a spiritual battle yes as being something where humanity is going to become sovereign in a much more powerful way and claim back uh, her power uh, as as a global humanity to serve and to ascend and to divide and to join the global matrix which includes non-terrestrials and non-sentient beings beyond what we understand as the normal and into the paranormal um do you think that they're going to um, have a stronger presence now that this 5D awakening is happening. These extraterrestrial beings that that are here to help us. I mean, it's so do you know it's so interesting, Caroline. I'm um, hearing the stories. You know, I'm always keeping my ears to the ground, and you know, I'm on many different you know WhatsApp chats around the world, and more and more people are seeing 
non-terrestrials. I mean, it is very, it's, I get goosebumps when I say it. You know, Tom, Dick and Harry are beginning to have non-terrestrial experiences. You see, this is a great thing about um, the world in which we live, is we've created these artificial pyramids of structure, of control, queen and her handbag. And, you know, she's quite high up the pyramid. She's actually not at the top of it, in my mind. I mean, she's passed now, of course, but, you know, these old pyramidic structures are being torn down. And, I, and it's really we the people. It's the local stories, the local people telling their stories and connecting to God and connecting to their experiences with non-terrestrials or sentient beings or um, it, it could be fairies, it could be earth creatures. The frequency on our planet, you see, has gone like that, meaning the higher frequency are higher, but now we can see the lower frequency. You see, before 2016, when the timeline hadn't changed, and yes, that's connected to 2012, but I see 2016 as the big visible manifestation of the timeline shift um, with the election of Donald Trump and, and, and really the visibility of seeing how destructive and dark the systems were. The whole game is left and right bullshit. The whole right. the black and white, gay, straight, Muslim, Jew, man, woman, absolute nonsense in order to divide you and me. It's just divisiveness. It's right. just, and once we see that and we own it, it's incredible how the alchemy starts. So I, I don't know whether I've answered your to a question, but I see humanity definitely uh, taking back power. And, you know, it, in the past, we would have just blamed, you know, the Bushes or the Obamas or the Clintons or, 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 or the Camerons or, or the, um, the Blairs. Again, I've, I've labeled every side, haven't I? I've labeled everyone, you see, because they're part of an agenda. It, yes. And then we go to the World Economic Forum, we go to Klaus Schwab, we go to right. the Federal Reserve. We are peeling the onion. We weren't doing that pre-2016. So true. I mean, I always say truth floats to the top. It has a way of, of uncovering itself. Uh, my only concern is a lot of the people that I communicate with, truth seekers and the like, um, they, they agree with what you've just said wholeheartedly. But there's an underlying anxiety because I don't know if it's dealing with the, having to like deal with the darkness straight on now. Um, what do you think folks can do to abate that anxiety that they're feeling? I mean, it's really interesting. I can really speak from my own personal experience. Now I've had a lot of trauma since my divorce of two years ago because one of my children doesn't, doesn't want to see me and you know, my children are, are, are young, 13, 14, and one of them doesn't want to see me because of my views. Um, I mean, it's connected to the divorce, but so it's actually, I'm quite grateful to her in some ways, beyond the trauma, of course, the suffering of not being able to see her, it has forced me and allowed me to really step into finding my community. And, you know, I mean, I could just speak very present tense. I sit here in a new friend's house in Tampa, Florida, where we had a dinner of 25 souls, 30 souls last night. Every single person here is dedicated to serving humanity. I mean, wow. You know, I mean, real, real actionable souls in service in the 3D. Some of them are super 5D. Some of them are actually focused just on the 3D and making it better. The point is, I don't really care how people serve because you need these archetypes. I'm an Aries. That's one archetype. Uh, Tom, maybe maybe a Virgo and do it in, through nuts and bolts and, and figures. Uh, the Scorpio may do it in a different way. The point is, are we here to to, to join the awakening? Are we here to co-create together? If we are, bingo, we have liftoff. So for me, it's very much about community to answer your question. I think one of the most important things is go out there and find your community. And of course, it's hard. We've all been split. That's part of the transhuman agenda, the globalist agenda, is to separate human beings because they know we're, we're creative and we're so, sociable creatures. And so the whole lockdown is six feet apart. Notice it was a lot of six, six and sixes, wasn't it, during the pandemic? A lot of sixes. Terrible. Mm. Yeah. yeah, terrible. Read the signs, and so um, you know you you got to you got to stand up, find community, and 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 that's really helpful. But of course, you have to do the inner work as well. And how do we do that? We go into nature. I'm big into the sea. I I, I swim in the sea. I walk in forests. I I drink pine needle tea. You know, there are many different things for lots of reasons, of course. You know, the pine needle tea, of course, is one protocol if you're around a lot of people who are shedding. You know, we're all well, we're all going to be susceptible. Right. Very concerning. Um, what about the World Economic Forum? W what's the whole deal with that? It's, it's so upsetting to see Klaus Schwab and Noel Harare, 
you know, go on these rants about humanity and how we need to be integrated into AI and connect our, you know, the Internet of Bodies thing. What's your whole take on that? Well, uh, you see, here's the thing. <laughs> Without doing an intense history lesson, this has been long in the offing. I mean, 1871, the United States was turned into a corporation after the Civil War because the, the country was bust on both sides and the Rothschilds and the European bankers came in and created some structures. We had the Federal Reserve Mark I. We fast forward to 1913, um, and it's interesting, just after the sinking of the Titanic, I'm not going to get into that now, but you can do, your listeners can do their research. And 1913 was a really important date because you have the, uh, you have the, um, basically, the third Federal Reserve, which is brought in. And that system is a private, was a private bank that controlled and lend, lend money to the United States government and basically has controlled the system of power, the leverages of power. And that really has played right up. The World Economic Forum is, is basically a manifestation of that, an outgrowth of that. It's a European project. It's a global project. Um, it's got many agendas. It's, right. it's tied to a one world government connected to the reset. And they've been planning this for years. The European Union and, you know, I've had to learn this on the hoof. I studied politics at university. I, you know, I was naive, like all of us uh, humans, that, you know, I wanted to join the European Union. I, I, was, I was a Brit. I mean, I was, I, I, I was always kind of on the centre right. And I tell you why, very simple, is because I have always championed individual rights, in the individual being able to make his or her decision, where, of course, good people on the centre left, you know, would be more about we've got to be in community. They're both absolutely important. But at the end of the day, the, to today, we've got to bring these together. We've got to really marry them because it's about our humanity and our children and our very you know, existence on this planet. The W, absolutely. the World Economic Forum, the Federal Reserve, all these organizations, the United Nations do not have and all the all the me medical systems do not. We know that we, they don't have humanity's best interests. Are any, anyone who wants to argue to the contrary is living in cloud cuckoo and either either deeply misinformed and full of propaganda and suffering mass formation psychosis and cognitive dissonance, or they are fundamentally part of a, an evil agenda. And, right. and, and for me, it's, this is very simple. Read my body language. You know, I'm about humanity stepping into their power once again uh, and, and, and having real sovereignty. And then together we can create larger groups to protect. Most human beings, when they're given the choice, want to compost. Most human beings want to preserve, protect. They don't want to destroy the local environment. You know, yes, there's plastic in the ocean. It needs to be cleared up. No one's debating that side. Right. But at the end of the day, the, the fake environmental protocol is basically taxation through the back door and, and control. Saturn, bad Saturn through the back door. Right, right. Now, like as an empath, I feel, um, you know, the minute somebody walks into a room, I, I pick up on a lot of, you know, their emotions and what they're feeling. And the thing that troubles me is the anger and the fear. Many of us through the past years have lost loved ones for many different reasons, uh, different belief systems regarding medical treatments. Um, what can we do? to start to heal and move away. I mean, I know there is righteous anger and many of us do have the right to feel angry. Like now they're asking for amnesty. So when I heard that, like my head exploded because there's no amnesty. There's just no amnesty. There's forgiveness, but there's no amnesty. So what can people do? Because as I said before, I'm just sensing so much of that fear and anger and anxiety. Um, so with things like meditation that can help them, but if you live in a, in an area like in the city and you can't get to nature, what are some of the things we can do to begin the healing process? Wow. This is a great question. And it's big. I mean, firstly, what I would say is one of the great tricks of the 20th century of the protocol of all of these international organizations has been to create atheism. The, yes. the, 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 the falling away of the belief in God, in the belief of a higher creator, but also we are connected to that majesty and that magic has allowed humans to be excessively fearful and as a result, more controlled. You only have to look at the Capricorn card in the tarot to understand the you know the, 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 with Baphomet at the top on his throne with the naked man and woman beneath it. Those chains around his or her neck are loose. 
but he and she know not how to take them off because of the enslavement programming. And my job is, uh, our job is to, to remind people of their power through faith. When we reestablish our connection to the higher realms, God, source, universe, I don't mind what we call it. I don't get bogged down in that. Mm -hmm. I work with Christians and I work with new age. I, 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 for me, it's about consciousness. It's about love. And when we operate from that, we've had so many past lives, all of us, it stops being as fearful because we're not suddenly in that 3D false light matrix where we are being controlled. I mean, look, you put a red ant and a white ant into a jar. OK, they're very peaceful. If you shake the jar, they both kill each other. Mm. That's the World Economic Forum. You know, or the or or the you know, or or the, the the man behind the curtain in the Wizard of Oz controlling. Once we pull the curtain back, uh, there's no need to be fearful. I mean, I watched that film the other day, V for Vendetta. You know, oh, that's great movie, yeah. So true. I mean, that's what 15 years old now is. It? I mean, I'm not a movie buff, but it's fascinating. Um, and, and you realize, wow, so much of it is the psychology of fear. So that's the first thing is work on that. That is a psychological warfare. Don't allow yourself to go into it. Create protocols through relationships, through the Sangha, as the Indians call it, community, but also your own work. Now, on a personal level, I love working with sounds. I love working with frequency vibration. Now, on a really good level, uh, let's talk water. This is one of my wheelhouses, and this is new stuff that's coming in. I'm working with a number of very interesting people, and there is going to be something called explosive water that is going to be more readily available for the people quite soon. When we drink this, what it's an optimizational water, it's, it's structured water, but it's structured in a way that it's not just getting the arsenic and the chlor chlorine and the fluoride out, which is very important. It's actually like a Tesla technology where the water is literally explosive. Think of a lightning and it's energized and it takes away inflammation. Most human disease, almost all human disease is down to inflammation. You know, the lipids grow on the other side of the membrane wall in order to protect it. That's why people get fat. OK, and then they become red and then they basically, uh, you know, they die of, 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 of many complications. When we flush ourselves with the correct water, our conscious level goes up as well. You see, the water has been deliberately polluted over many, many years. I'm not going to get into the technicals when you combine fluoride with chlorine, chlorine and obviously the wrong type of chlorine because it's a certain type of chlorine. And I'm not a scientist, by the way. So your listeners need to go off and do their own due diligence. But there's good and bad chlorine. It's complex. But we have been ingesting really bad stuff in our water, even in bottled water. So this is what's coming down the pipeline. It's going to be OK. We're just going through the eye of the storm now. Is is this ionized water or is that something different? Part of it, but it's more than that. It's more it's, than it's, that. It's, it's, it's stuff which we haven't really known about, and I'm only beginning to learn from certain sources, and it is going to be made available soon. I mean, I'm going to be building healing temples, um, hopefully with uh, some very interesting people around the world, starting in the United States, where people will be able to come and experience these technologies and really profoundly heal. Wow, that sounds so exciting. Now, well, you, is, this some, is this... You are 70% you are water. I am 70% right. water. It is, it is, that is the holy grail. Is this something that we'll see in the next year or so, or how soon do you think? And this is very much my guess, my belief. I mean, the other thing is, I'm not setting myself up for dates and stuff. You know, we've all seen great people, you know, really want to see something happen by a certain date and it hasn't. I strongly believe, sincerely hope that this technology, because I know it's there, it's been there for a while. It's been suppressed, of course. We know that it will be available at some point in 2023. Wow, that's so exciting. To what extent it will be rolled out, that I don't know. That's predicated on the relationships with consistent institutions, water companies, being able to get this into the pipes for the people. Wow. We'll have to follow that closely for sure. What do you think is next for humanity? What I know that's a huge question, but... but Here's what I, and I'm going to stick to the language of astrology. So it's just helpful and it creates clarity and a framework from which to work. Um, we have Pluto in Capricorn, as you know, we started in 2008 with the crash. 
What is Pluto? Death and resurrection, part of the hero's journey, the abyss, death, rebirth in Capricorn. What does that mean? Institutions, currency, government, big business, all the big corporations. By the time Pluto leaves Capricorn in 2024, it's done. All those institutions that are cancerous, that no longer serve humanity, will be eviscerated from this planet. Then Pluto moves into Aquarius. That becomes a little different. It's a different version of Saturn. It's to do with belief beliefs and what we're going to see starting even now because of the, because of the retrograde cycle we will start to see people really i'm talking tom dick and harry down the pub the, the average you know joe schmo is going to start to be forced to really reevaluate his and her belief system and this is the shift because it's <coughs> but ultimately it doesn't matter what beliefs we've had we have operated in an illusion it's okay. I'm the poster child for this. I went to a very educated school in England. I was, that means I was deeply programmed. So we're all in this together, folks. You know, it's a question of stepping into our knowledge that we have been brainwashed, taught a certain thing, and we're coming out of it. There's no blame, but we are able now to start to believe differently about ourselves and to learn that history, in some ways, has been his story. Yes, I think we've been lied to, you know, historically. It, I saw a movie the other day about maritime law and yeah. how it's all connected. It, it blew it blew my mind. So folks Get should definitely look into that. I mean, you know, and I'm certainly no expert on this, but it's fascinating coming from Britain, of course, a Capricorn country, but also a very powerful maritime power and how really the British, the Anglo-Saxons, you know, we, we have a lot of, we're going to have, we will have to, you know, apologize as a species, as a group, quite profoundly when we're out the other side, when really the truth comes out, what maritime law has been, the enslavement of humanity. Now, this has been going on for a long, long time. You know, I, I'm not going to get into Cain versus Abel today and the Kazarians, but this, this is ancient stuff here. I've also been reading and watching a lot about the mud floods. Yes. And I, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of that too. Yes. Um, do you have any opinion on that at all? I mean, I definitely believe there have been periodic resets throughout history. Yep. And, and obviously, if you shorten human beings' lives, it's much more easy then to control the narrative because uh, people die younger and they forget. We haven't got granny anymore at home at 130 years old saying, oh, no, that actually didn't happen all this right, year. Right, you know? right. And this is the thing, you know, we all need granny or great or great granny at home telling us actually, you know, food is this. It's not that package, you know. <laughs> so do you think we're headed towards a reset, but not like an extinction reset? So I, well, here's the thing, you see, you can't have the great awakening without the great reset. And this time round, it's different. There isn't a war. The, the great reset, uh, you know, masterminders wanted the war. They wanted a pandemic where they were going to shut down the world. Mm -hmm for five, 10 years. And they weren't going to get a vaccine for five, 10 years deliberately to keep people enslaved and at home frightened and, and, and bring out the, the mass genocide. I mean, in my, in my understanding, and this is, it is complex, Operation Warp Speed has a number of purposes, but it was to get America and by extension the world back out to be able to earn so people were, could stay sovereign to an extent. And of course, there's been a lot of pain. It's been very confusing on on, on Trump and his position on the vaccines. Exactly. Uh, very confusing. And I, you know, my guess is as good as yours. But uh, Operation Warp Speed for me was very much about uh, stopping the agenda of, of, of the globalists to basically shut down the economy for a decade and then really really that would have absolutely obliterated humanity yes yes and it, and that happened that has yes. happened we're fearful people can be fearful you know there's a lot we have to get through but you know we are back to work and yes there's trauma and a lot of people are much poorer absolutely and that's where we have radical compassion but the, the timeline changed in 2016 mrs clinton did not write a failure speech she right did, no one thought within that team they, they thought they had it in the bag because they always have done. And that's when the timeline changed. And it's, you know, it's bumpy, you know, 2016, really through to 2030. I don't see us clear 100% until 2030, but I see 2024 being a big watershed. Yeah, because I, I heard that they're now like trying to quicken this 2030 agenda to happen sooner. Uh, as far as all the violence that we're seeing out there and the crime, 
Um, do you think that's all a part of the agenda as well? Do you think it's all like planned out? Totally. They to want to say, of course they want chaos. Look, what's the Hegelian dialect? You know, problem, reaction, solution. Right. Great. Allow the reaction and then offer a solution, which is the digital world currency and the control credit system like China, Communist Party. I mean, you know, it's pretty easy once you see the agenda. I just, you know, wake up and smell the coffee. Now, I also heard that it's not a good idea to like, and I, I totally agree, to like force people into waking up. Because uh, some people, you can approach a topic and you can tell within 30 seconds how open they are, how resistant they will be. Um, what can we do, aside from like what we're doing right now, connecting to community, um, talking more of our truths openly without fear of censorship, what else can we do? to quicken this 5D awakening. And can you just quickly explain what that is in case some of our listeners aren't sure, they might be saying, what is 5D exactly? I mean, I, I mean a lot of people use this term 5D, five density, five dim fifth dimension. I mean, Christ consciousness, the ascension. I would say it's us learning to become more heart-centered. I would say it's connected to us as human beings, learning to realize that the mind isn't where it starts and finishes. The mind isn't the alpha and the omega. Um, it, we have to integrate the mind, as I said earlier, into the physical, into the emotional, into the spiritual, hence the four elements. Then we have the fifth element, you see, which is the ether, which is alchemy. So al uh, ascension looks very different for different people. And to answer your question about how we can, you know, gently you know, show people. Some people need a little prod or a little, maybe stick as SGN on says very eloquently, um, you know, you start with the economic, you start with something a little bit, you don't go straight in with child sacrifice and satanic ritual. Okay, you start right. with some really good basic economic data, uh, especially for people who are more left brain. So, well, it's interesting. I mean, you know, here in America, I see this a lot. Oh, they all hated Trump. But my gosh, I was paid. I, I was much wealthier under Mr. Trump. You know, mm -hmm. there's some problems with distance, but they're trying to put it together. And they're saying, I mean, I know a ton of people, not enough, but I know a lot of people. I wish I could say a ton, actually. I know a lot of people who were very much die in the world Democrats, but now they're never going to vote for them again because that's their awakening process. They realize they've been hoodwinked. It's just for us awakened. It's tough because it teaches us a lot of patience. And that's something I lack. <laughs> I hear you on that. Many of us suffered um, either a loss of family, like you said, a family member. I lost my husband um, last year in a very terrible way. Thank you. So it's it's a lot of this awakening has been through pain and suffering. You bring up a very, very important point, probably the most important point is the compassion that we are experiencing as a species. Um, through suffering, we really are getting into a higher level of consciousness. It is sad, but it is just the way this realm works. We have to process our stuff, go through into the light, go through into the light um, through suffering. And so we lose loved ones, but it does allow us to get really onto the onto the journey of, 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 of enlightenment. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I saw my husband who um, did have a medical problem, but we took him to the hospital real quickly and he was tested for COVID three times negative. We took him to the hospital. They tested him positive. Within two days, he was given, I'll, I'm going to use the funny term for it. Run death is near. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I guess I could say run death severe. And yep. he had passed away within 48 uh, hours. I'm so sorry to hear this, but I also must say I've heard this story. Sad. Exactly. I mean, almost every single time. It, 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 and it, it, listen, those stories are the most powerful because yes. how can you argue to the contrary when really these people, I mean, you know, I know the protocols with all sorts of ones. I mean, I don't know whether you want to discuss them or not. Is it best not to? Sure. No, it's fine. Because, I'm you know, done being afraid. I, well, I'm not. I, I didn't give a monkeys, but you know whether it's either mectin or hydroxychloroquine. Right. You know, all these different protocols. I mean, the, the Zelenko protocol. I mean, what right. an amazing, great contribution to humanity. But yet, the poor man wasn't able to, you know, survive. He died at 49. Tragic. Tragic. You know, this this is a quickening. This is this is a spiritual war, and we never forget the the, the, the soldiers and the and the beautiful souls who fought for 
for the movement, for humanity. And, and they will be honoured in time immemorial. I mean, right. you know, I mean, let's take even someone like David Icke. And of course, luckily, he's still very much with us. But he, mm. you know, within the movement, some people have questioned some of his things recently, understandably, you know. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. He has been chomping at the bit for 30, 40 years. He is a, he's a father of the movement. He's helped yes. so many of us in the awakening process. And it doesn't really matter whether he's on the ball now or not. Well, he is in many ways, but he, I, don't think, I don't agree with him on everything. And that's okay. No, we don't have to agree with everything everyone says, but I mean, didn't they just ban him like yeah. in countries? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Crazy, sure. crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, I know you're on a tight deadline. You're going to a wonderful, the Zelenko conference. Um, super excited to, to see what you guys uh, put out there in terms of videos and information for us. And I, I I'll let you go. I, I want to just let you know, I'm so grateful that you were able to take the time to talk to me. And I really hope that we can do this again. Love that, Caroline. Thank you. You're a real, you are, you're a, you're a beautiful light. I can see your aura glowing. So Thank, profound. You. Thank you so much for sharing with me, allowing me to share with you today. Thank you so much. And I will be in touch with you soon okay. and God bless. And thank bless. you so much. Okay. Lots take care. Bye. 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 -bye. We are responsible for our, our own reality and for our own responses. After all, our response is our responsibility. The world shifts because we shift. You see, the external world is actually a reflection of the inner world. And modern physics pretty much backs this up, that what we see and what we feel projects out into the collective. The biggest problem for humanity, people are very busy identifying with groups in order to survive, identifying with different races and religions. But the only real group we should identify ourselves with is God, or Source, Consciousness, Light. The power is in our own divinity. Human beings are all divine, but I think a lot of us still haven't woken up to that truth. And when we realize our own divinity, when we realize that we actually have the power of our own, we control the source, we really are free because governments 
and people can't control us because we're not frightened. So the real challenge for us as human beings is to step into the unknown with trust and wonder and not be frightened because that fear keeps us in the stomach chakra in the third dimension and uh, we're not able to go beyond it but when we come into the heart and open up into those more cosmic parts of our nature then we're able to um, manifest in a very powerful way.